switch directions. I can go left, right. I can need cut this way, need cut that way. Can't get triangle, right? Can't get triangle here. I can't get Kimura, can't get guillotine, can't get armbar. So I'm safe from submissions if I'm standing. Even if I'm lower and I'm in a combat stance, I can give this guy a triangle. He's not going to get the triangle with my what? My knees up, right? He can't put me in a Kimura. He can't guillotine. He can't collar choke me. So his submission game is out the window. So as a result, this guy developed what we call the Delahiva. And then later they developed what? The reverse Delahiva. And later still they develop what? The single X, right? And then they start attacking heel hooks because now people get their knees blown. There's a thing called a reconstructive surgery that didn't exist in the 1960s. So they can construct their knees. So now you can heel hook too. So my game changed completely from being like so dominant in this combat stance, which was the norm in jiu-jitsu for the last 20 years, to whereas now, Combat stance is not that great of an idea. It's not that I shouldn't use it, shouldn't learn it. It's not that it's not working. It's that it, this guy has so many tools in his arsenal that he didn't have 10 years ago that I'm starting to think that the best way to pass is the way people used to pass back in the day. And what I'm referring to here is back into, there are basically two families of passing, right? The over under here where I'm going right, right? I'm doing like that, that they call it the Baja pass. I just call it the over under pass. Or I'd switch sides and I go, Right, the stacking pass. So like that's those are the two families. You know, if I'm passing on my knees, and they, they work together. So we're gonna work on that a little bit. So uh, the first situation we're gonna work on is when this guy's playing what we call a de la Hiva. So I'm gonna start standing so I can approach my guard standing. This guy's playing a de la Hiva. What I'm gonna show you guys now works well, gi and no gi. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna start. And then the second half is gonna be identical for the rest of the seminar. Okay. But the first half is gonna change because we're gonna approach a number of different guards. So whenever my boat is playing a de la Hiva here, uh, even before I get to my knees, I have to, you know, I can't just go to my knees, I'm going to be off balance, right? One thing this guy's constantly trying to do, especially in the gi, more is true in the gi, is he's trying to pull my weight off my center, my center grab that way, so he can bear and me or put me off balance in a way where I step here, and so you know he's on my back, right? So I have to keep my center of gravity behind his knees. I don't want my head sticking forward. That's what he wants. So I'm actually safer if I'm standing a little bit further behind. The other thing I'm looking for, I don't want my knee pointing in that direction under any circumstances because what this guy wants is to get me to hold my back. That's what De La Hiva really is. It's a chase to the back. The more I turn, you know, the more I'm holding him. So what I really try to do is I point my toes outwards. It's a very goofy stance, but if I'm standing straight here, I'm trying to do that. So if my knee is pointing outwards, his De La Hiva is useless. It feels very strange at first because instinctively, like anatomically speaking, you want to have your feet pointed forward. But if I could have my toe pointed out, it's very difficult for him to play the way he doesn't like it. It doesn't fit. You guys can try. It's very simple, very effective. The second thing is I constantly got to be peeling this hook. I don't like this attachment. This is what we call a short delahiva, which is like the, the fashion these days. And then we call a long delahiva, which is a better delahiva, just hard to get. Which is that people with shorter legs adapted. Uh, to uh, uh, taller people with a short de la Hiva because, and then they created like a whole new set of techniques from there. But in either case, I have to be getting rid of this leg as I open up my toe. So you can push the knee, you can push the shin, whatever you feel comfortable with. I prefer to push the shin a little bit closer to the end of the lever. You get a little more out of the push if you're closer to the shin than you are on the knee. And the other thing I'm doing is I'm diving with my left hand underneath his leg. His legs are only efficient if they're working in coordination. Once I go with one arm over and the other one under, he doesn't have the same coordination for a de la Hiva, okay? Now, what's, gonna, what's, what's important for the, what I'm going to show next is that my right knee is going to go behind my arm. This is very important. What a lot of people do here is that they try to keep the knee in front and then they can't sprawl, which is what we're going to do next. So once I peel, my knee goes behind the arm. So just a quick turn here so I can see. You see how my leg goes behind my arm? This is very important. So one more time, playing the Hiva, I stand tall. That right there, this is all I'm looking for. Once I have my toe pointed out and my leg goes behind my arm, I can begin to sprawl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my knee towards the camera over there, okay? And I'm not coming forward with my weight, it's coming back. So I just broke his Dela Hiva. Now I land myself where? In this, what we call this over-under position. And what this does, there's no guarantee you're going to pass but I just broke his de la Hiva. And if your opponent happens to be an expert at de la Hiva, that's what he's good at, that's a huge victory. Very significant. Because a lot of times in Jiu Jitsu we have this idea that everything I do has to put me in a submission. And yeah, sure, it'd be great if I can like, jump on an arm bar and finish this guy from where I'm at. The reality of combat is that I have to win, I have to win this fight inch by inch. And if I can take an inch, that's a victory. Because then I can move on to the next one, right? So sometimes, yeah, sure, you want to be greedy. 
But you got to keep in mind that not everything is going to take place in what? In one victory, right? Sometimes it's step by step. And just putting this guy out of his element is huge. We're going to talk about the over-under pass in a minute. But first, I want you guys to get in this first half, right? This is how I break it. Like, stay tall, okay? Don't lean over. That's what he wants. Stay tall. Okay, make sure this leg, if it happened to be on my hip, just make sure I can get my arm on the inside when I need to, okay? Because I'm going to have to thread this leg with my left arm. Okay, turn the toe, heel. Yes. I open my right knee. I don't sprawl forward. Sprawl back. And then I can start moving forward, okay? Don't even worry about passing right now. I'm going to show you guys a number of details on how to finish that pass. I just want you guys to be worried about this first half because we're going to have to spend plenty of time on the second half as we move on. Right now, I just want to focus on this, this first step. Breaking the Dela Hiva, right? Any questions? I know it's a lot of information. No? Okay? Just remember, guys, put the knee behind the arm. That's the one thing I want you guys to remember, okay? If you were in a gi, you could be holding the gi in case you're wondering. Everything else is exactly the same in case you're wearing a gi. Got it? All right, guys, do me a favor. Grab a partner about the same weight first. Second, colored belt, grab a white belt. So if you're a black, black belt, brown belt, purple belt, find a white belt you can help out. Can you do that? All right, one, two, three. 